who wants to build some pole starts? Come on, I know you do. Well, I got just the video for you today. Well, I put together a quick little vid video tutorial about how to rebuild your pole start. Um, pull starts are a necessary evil in this fiscal world. Uh, if you've got a gas motor at some point, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you got to fix one. So uh, hopefully some tips and things along the way. Um, I'm going to be rebuilding a uh, RC Max billet pull start in the video, but uh, the mechanics are pretty much the same if you've got a CY or a NOAA one. So hopefully you'll find some tips and tools and help you, uh, you know, save this videos for when it does break and uh, we got some tips to help you fix them. All right, when you take your pull start off your engine, this is what you're going to find. Now I had already kind of pre-disassembled this, but basically when I start, depending on what's wrong with it, you may or may not have to do some of these steps, but I, you know, cut that off. I release the tension in here and this will spin back up inside your spool. I'm not like I said, I had already loosened this just to make it quicker for the video. But So you take it off, you've got your rope, and you'll note the way that it's wound. And you'll see in there there's a spring. That's everybody's favorite part about doing a pull start. Usually what you find when you pull that um, reel off, this is usually what you get. Whee! If you're fortunate enough... You get to do this. So what we're going to do, I kind of, and again, this is just something I do. Everybody's got their own technique. But for winding them, what I did was I made a little jig for myself. And you'll notice this black circle. That's the goal, the size I want it to be when I wind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the first end. And I use um, finish nails because they're round on the top and you can slide this off pretty easy. And I also position this, I don't know if you can see that hook, the same way it goes into the housing. So I put that on there, and then you wind. And the reason I use the nails is just so I can, you know, free up my hands. There you go. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see that. I wound it smaller than the circle, which is my target size. I'm going to slide it off the nails. Okay. Now I've got this ready to go in the pull start. It's very important. You better hold that thing together. You want to hold it, pinch it at the spot where that hook is. Hold that thing like it's a viper, ready to bite. Because uh, once you let go, it's all over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it into the housing and I'm going to hook it to the spot that's predetermined in there. And if you can see that. Once I get it positioned, everything's flat, it's inside, I'm going to release the tension. There. Alright, I realized I forgot to show you something and so I, I backed up a little bit. You can see there's nothing in here. If you want, if you go, say you don't want to coil your spring, which is a colossal pain in the ass, and you buy a new spring, the beauty of these is they're preset, ready to slide right in. Some have tape on them, some have a metal piece or a plastic piece, a band holding it together. You're basically going to slide that in there, and remember to get that hook positioned so it catches where the catch is right in there. So you put that on there, and I got it positioned right there. Hopefully you can see that in the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on this and that's going to slide that either uh, tape or that uh, rope or whatever's holding this coil together and it's going to unwind and it's going to be in perfect position. So if you don't want to do this, just get yourself a new spring and do it that way. It's a lot easier. Now if you have a Zenoa 30N or different type of pull start, you'll notice that sometimes the real coils inside the spool. So concept is the same, that hook, hook right there, and this hook is to catch the latch oops, inside, the, inside the housing. So if this doesn't catch on here, this inside piece doesn't catch on the inside of here, you won't have any tension on your pull start. So you'll spin it and spin it and spin it and nothing will happen. Once it catches, 
you'll notice you got your tension. So that's how you know you got it in there correctly. Now if you need to reshape these coils, and you'll notice that, you know, a lot of times when you pull these apart, they fling all over, they get all bent up, you know, maybe this is all, you know, coctionide. Um, a lot of, little tip I do, if you want to reshape it, you can use yourself a socket or something, and you can sh reshape the inside of that so it's positioned the way that you want it, so when it's coiled back up, it matches the position there to make the catch, okay? Okay, there's something else I wanted to show you guys. Now this applies to RC Max pull starts specifically. And we do plan on having this rope available for Zenoas because um, when I show you the qualities of it, you guys are going to get pretty excited. But um, if you have an RC Max pull start and you have the old white reel, that's the older design. The newer one has this black reel. This is made out of a heavy duty billet plastic polymer. So it's cut and shaped perfectly, and it's extremely, it's extremely dense and hard. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, this is called diamond cord. Now this is a stock Zenoa cord. This is diamond cord. I mean, you can see the difference in thickness. Now that's not the only difference. The difference is the way that they weave these fibers in there. Now I'll show you something. This is a pair of regular shears. You know, your Zenoa one. See how easy that cuts? Well, it breaks just as easy the same way. This diamond cord, look at that. I am, everything I have just to get it to break. What I use for this is a pair of snips, and you can hear it, you can hear it snap. That's when you broke through. And you see how hard that stuff is? It, it, it really is amazing stuff. I've seen this stuff so hard, it actually breaks the reel before it breaks the rope. Now, um, one of the things, once you cut any thread like this, whether it's a Zanola one, you want to burn the tip. That keeps it from fraying. So we heat the tip up with a little bit of heat. You can use a torch, I use a lighter. And I shape it a little bit so it's pointed so it goes so it feeds a little bit easier. Once you got that, you're good to go. Nice clean edge, doesn't fray, doesn't come unraveled. I wanted to uh, demonstrate how strong this cord is. I would not dry this with the Zanola cord. This is a 40, 45 pound Wanko weight. I tied the pull cord to it. Look at that. Nothing. I mean, that is one strong ass cord. Okay, so you've cut your cord. One of the things to mention, it's really important the length of this cord that is accurate. This has an extension, so we have a slightly longer cord. If you're doing a Zenoa one, a lot of guys, what happens is their cord breaks or that knot pulls out. What they do is they just retie it, and it does work. But the problem is, when you're pulling on the pull starter, when you pull it out, you want to pull, there's your short pulls, your short strokes to pull the engine to start it. What happens when your cord's too short is you pull all the way to where it's pulled, extended completely, and it stops you. Well, that, that sudden stop at the end is what breaks the reel on the inside. It can make that knot on the inside come out, and it can break it. So if you don't overextend, or if your rope is the right length, then when you're pulling, you're not going to get to the end. And that's what you want. Now, if you are pulling and you got too much cord, what's going to happen when that cord winds back up in that reel, it's going to bind when it gets in there. And what's going to happen is your pull start is going to go like this. And it's not going to go all the way in. So it has to be the proper length. Take, it, take the time, measure it, make sure you got the right one. Okay, so back to our pull start. What I did, now this is just the way I do it. Now everybody has their own method. Some guys will put it in the reel first, some guys will fish it through there. What I do is I fish it inside there. I put it through my pull start handle. 
Now here's something else a lot of guys don't do that you should do. You can use a washer. This bigger pull start you can use this flange nut. It fits perfectly in there and it helps stop that knot from going through. Because so what happens if you have just plastic in there, that plastic gets hot being next to the motor, it starts to expand a little bit and you go to pull it and that knot pulls right through. Well this keeps that from happening. So I'm going to fish it through there, I'm going to put my nut on, and then I'm going to tie my knot. Now what I do, again, this is little stuff, but I do think it makes a difference. I take a couple pairs of pliers, and you don't want to fray the cord, so you got to be careful when you do this, but I get a nice tug on there. Make sure that knot is super, super tight. Okay, then I'll put a little heat on it. You don't want a lot. You just want to you just want to bind them fibers together, nice and tight, so it doesn't come off. And you got your stop. You're good to go. So then I pull it tight through there where I want it, and then I'm going to fish it through the reel. Now the reel, you can see the hole. I'm going to fish it through the hole. And I'm going to make my knot. Once again, make my knot. And you want this knot to be as close to the edge as possible because you don't want excess because there's not much room in there to hide the cord. So let's pull this thing nice and tight. Put a little bit of heat on it. And like I said, you don't have to do some of these extra steps. I just take this time to do it because I don't like when the pull starts fall apart. All right, so I'm pretty confident with that knot now. This little spot, you'll see a little notch here. That's what holds the knot. I'm going to set my thing in there. And I'm going to tuck that extra piece in there. You don't want excess sticking out because what, again, that will do is that it will bind on your reel. So your reel won't retract because it's getting hung up on that piece of rope that's sitting out. So once I got that, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm going to wrap this. And notice I'm going clockwise. And I get it. I want a little bit of slack in here. That should be enough. And you'll see that little notch right there. That's really important when you're wrapping a pull start. So I'm going to set it in that notch. And then I'm going to set my reel down in there. Now you got to make sure the reel seats. Sometimes you got to fuss with it. Because if that latch doesn't hook, you're not going to get a you're not going to get a proper grab on your pull start. And this one's going to be okay. So it, it's in there. I can feel the tension. Okay? Now I've got my reel rope in that little spot right there. So next time what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble my pull start. I'm going to tighten it down. Get my trusty whirr bits, proper size. Now you'll notice there's a washer in here. All, every part on this pull start is important. You'll notice that inside there, the reel is lower than that billet piece in there. And the reason being is so when I put this on there, I can tighten this down all the way. It's not going to bind the reel. This washer keeps the reel from coming out. So let's put that in there. So I'm confident I've got it in there nice and tight. I've got no binding on my reel. I've got my rope in that rope. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go around. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating tension on the pull start. So I'm going to keep going around. Make sure it stays in that little slot. And usually this goes a little smoother, but you can actually use the rope and just twist it around like that. You see what I'm doing? Now what I'm doing is I'm causing the spring, I'm loading the spring up. Now how many times? That's up personal preference. You want this taut. It doesn't need to be super, super tight. I've, I'm pretty confident that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull that through, release it. 
higher pull start. It's good. Proper length. Check your fitment. No binding. And there you go. That's how to build a pull start.